It's time for some more history, history, history. Yo, we are back today. We're so excited to learn. I know you guys love to learn. Today, we're going to be talking about some more ancient uh, African kingdoms. Today, we'll be talking about the East African kingdom called the Land of Punt, which was an old kingdom in East Africa. And, you know, it was a very, very important trading partner with, with Egypt and the Egyptians and was well known and documented in Egyptian history. Um, and it, the Land of Punt was known for producing and exporting gold, uh, you know, uh, aromic uh, resins, you know, for example, incense blackwood, ebony, ivory, and exotic animals. Uh, the ancient Egyptians, uh, you know, idolized basically the land of Punt. Uh, and the land of Punt had very exotic things like, you know, when the Egyptians would travel to the land of Punt, they would have like beehives uh, shaped houses and they were raised uh, on like, um, uh, you know, pillars or stilts you know, above the water. And, you know, to the Egyptians, this was very exotic and a very mysterious place and from which the Egyptians loved to travel and receive visitors from. Um, and numerous times, you know, royalty of the land of Punt came and uh, into the, the Pharaoh's court in Egypt and, you know, back and forth, uh, the Pharaohs would come to Egypt as well. There was many Pharaohs um, in the different dynasties of Egypt. Um, there was a lot of them. And a lot of them would uh, travel to the land of Punt and they loved the land of Punt. That was their vacation area. That was a very exotic place for the people that lived in Egypt and the citizens of Egypt. Um, and yeah, that was the land of Punt. And the land of Punt was considered to the Egyptians very unique place, like an emporium of goods for both kings and gods. And the land of Punt in, uh, in Egypt was like going on vacation, like I said, to most people. And the land of Punt had wealthy goods and resources and was a very, very tropical. The region is known for ancient Egyptian, you know, from ancient Egyptian records in which the land of Punt was documented on pyramid walls. And at, at times, you know, the ancient Egyptians called uh, the land of Punt Ta Netra, uh, meaning God's land. And this referred to the fact that it was among the regions of the sun gods that, you know, was in the region located in the direction of the sunrise uh, to the east of Egypt. And ancient Egyptians state that the land of Punt is one of the original places in which Egyptians come from, which is a very, very interesting fact. Um, and Punt was a commercial center for goods, not only for, you know, the citizens and within the land of Punt and its own borders, but from elsewhere in Africa. Uh, you know, the, the Egyptians saw and found many items that did not exist within the two lands, which are, you know, referred to as Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt uh, by the Egyptians and by, you know, the rest of us as well. Um, and from Punt, you know, they received, the, the, you know, just everything, incense uh, known as Antio and which was producing considerable quantities as well as ivory, ebony, and gum. I mean, all kind of stuff, you know, from the land of Punt. And from the mysterious places that they also imported, uh, you know, giraffes, panthers from this mysterious place, uh, cheetahs, you know, which were worn by temple priests. Uh, and sometimes, you know, live animals themselves were transported back to Egypt for the Egyptians' own amusement and, you know, religious purposes. Uh, for example, the sacred Sino uh, baboons were imported from the land of Punt uh, to Egypt. And, you know, because of the goods in the land of Punt, uh, you know, used by the priests and to adorn temples in the land of Punt, it was known as a region of God's land and considered a, you know, personal pleasure garden for the god Amun uh, um, of Egypt. And, and, you know, a wall, a wall in a mortuary um, of Imhotep the third, which was uh, the Egyptian pharaoh of the 18th dynasty, recorded a speech delivered, you know, delivered by the god Amun, stating like this, and I'm going to recite it how he would say, it. "Turning my face to sunrise, I created a wonder for you. I made the lands of Punt come here to you with all the fragrant flowers of their land, and to beg your peace and breathe the air you give." And this is what he had what he had wrote. This is what he said that the God of Mon had said to him as a Pharaoh. And this is what he, you know, had wrote down and you can look it up and research it. And it's still there today. Um, and even a Egyptian queen had set out, you know, to the land of Punt just to bring back rare exotic metals, animals, fragrances, like I've stated before, as well as people who wish to move to Egypt um, because, you know, everybody was moving back and forth from everywhere, um, especially in Africa. And she talks about the abundant riches in, in the land and how much of it was paradise and tropical and that it was truly was God's land. And, you know, the land of Punt 
really never had any record of um, anything but mass trade. Um, you know, it wasn't known uh, by the Egyptians uh, who stayed in the land of Punt that there was any wars or any kind of beef between any of them. There was always a trade partner. Actually, I think one time there was a little uh, misunderstanding between the land of Punt and Egypt. And uh, I think the, the, the trading uh, routes and the trading partnership was cut off. But other than that, the land of Punt was very very abundant uh and had many many soldiers and just very abundant and many citizens and was very abundant in uh anything you could think of you know uh whether it be metals gold um you know um, um spices herbs incense things that they were very very uh um, you know very very well known for and, and had a big abundance of at the time and they it, it was it was it's thought that the uh the god best which if you don't know what the god best is is african god one of the oldest african gods if not the oldest african god that at least is known of and best is basically um i don't want to get too far in it because i will make another video about as i do about african gods and best but best is basically a dwarf god or like a you know if you don't know what dwarf is midget or just small a very small god and um uh he had the uh, half of his body was uh of an animal like a goat or you know had hooves and and, and legs of that nature and then the half part was man and it was said that um Bess was actually imported into Egypt uh you know as a god from the land of Punt which was very 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 interesting to me because I've obviously learned about Bess not too long ago maybe about a couple years ago and to know that uh even the Egyptians have uh noted that um they you know have taken so much stuff from the land of Punt and so much uh, uh the land of Punt was 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 such a big um, a big partner with Egypt and such a, uh, uh, you know, sort of say a big brother or just a, a trading of, of different cultures and, and, and different things. It was just very interesting to, to know that, uh, you know, a lot of people uh, presume that Bess's origins is from the land of Punt and off of the, um, just of what the Egyptians have said on their pyramid walls about the land of Punt and, uh, you know, just things of that nature. So, as we talk about the land of Punt, we do understand that the land of Punt was um, very, very rich in minerals, natural resources, and like I said, it was a very tropical place. Uh, you know, it was noted that there was palm trees. It was noted that there was animals that, you know, obviously couldn't be found in Egypt or at least in Lower Egypt, seeing that, you know, it's a deserty atmosphere. And at one point it was all, you know, tropical, the Sahara Desert, which I'm gonna do a video about that when the Sahara Desert was uh, tropical and when it has, uh, you know, it had different, um, it has different time cycles so to where a couple thousand years is tropical then other couple thousand years it turns into desert but i'll definitely get back on there but at this point in current in that or i'm not saying current but in that part of the egyptian's history it was still desert and still is for the most part today so when they went to the land of punt it was very exotic it, it had a lot of things a uh, bunch of things and there was never really talks about fighting or skirmishes other than that one that one time uh, with, with one of the pharaohs that, you know, trading uh, was interrupted by, a, I, I want to say it was a disagreement or a misunderstanding or something of that nature. But other than that, Egypt and the land of Punt were very, very big traders and the land of Punt is very abundant, had many, many uh, of, of, of uh, wealthy natural resources and animals and incense and food. They were very famous for the incense too as well. The Egyptians loved their incense. Um, uh, their incense were uh, very, you know, renowned and they they had so many different kind of spices, so many different kind of rom uh, you know, aromatic uh, um, flavors and scents and things like that. And the Egyptians just loved it. They, they came, uh, you know, many of uh, uh, pilgrim, you know, pilgrimages and many of travels and many of, um, uh, you know, just, you know, voyages to go get natural resources, spices, uh, animals and all kind of things. So today you learned a little bit about the land of Punt. Um, I love the land of Punt. I've always heard about the land of punt it is a mysterious place to me still even to this day i even love the name i might even name one of my kids punt you know i just i just love the name and it just sounds so ancient and it's so ancient and as always to all my african people in the world yo even if you don't think you're african you're african and to all my african people in the, in the world yo we have to stick together one love we always have to know our history and today yo we are stepping to another ground, to a new generation, to a new forefront, to where we know our history and we know who we are and we will not 
uh, be bamboozled and we can learn and be prideful of ourselves and pass it on to the next generation, as well as to learn from history to where we can uh, instill self-pride into ourselves and know that we can build kingdoms, know that we can build civilizations, and then we will in the future in return do so and have something to refer back to so when we go through hard times, we can look and, and say, hey, look at these people, look at the land of Punt, look what they did, or look at the ancient Egyptians, look what they did, or, or look at the Ashanti kingdom, you know, look what they did, or look at the uh, you know, Tom Empire of Ethiopia, look what they did. So always remember, yo, history means everything, and all the most successful people in, 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 in the world, not all of them, because we're living in a time period where people don't even have to read for the most part to be rich and famous, but a majority of successful people in history and current times, if you go in their house or you go wherever they live, that they had books of history, of language, of food, of everything, and they were very, for the most part, very worldly people. Not all of them, so don't, yo, don't cut my neck off for that one. Not all of them, by any means, but a lot of them did. So, like I always say to all my Africans, yo, one love and... Be safe this week, yo. Be careful and just understand who you are in this world. And as always, yo, be safe. Love you. And may a hundred years of gold come your way. And yo, one love. I'm out. Peace.